This also gets into the paradox of mobile payments, and that is that it sometimes seems like places like Kenya are more advanced with regard to mobile payments than we are here in the U.S. Because they can very simply on their, use their phones to make these payments user to user, and frankly, I can't do that right now. Uh, Why is that? Absolutely. I think that's, that's a very good point that not only we've enabled to actually uh, sort of those, to, to have those users with mobile phone to make actually peer-to-peer -peer payment and that was the first usage that we saw. So that was the case in Kenya, 2007. It's now the case in Tanzania where we have uh, half of our base who are sort of able to make those payments. And what we've seen, and going back to a point which has been mentioned throughout the day uh, already, is that it's you know, important to look at what sort of users are needing. And sort of what we've seen when we've launched the service is that there was a key uh, need to actually uh, send money across distances. Um, there's less, I would say, formalized uh, form of retail than what we, we, we would see here. So that's sort of how it started. Now we've seen the, uh, the, the service being applied to a number of other sort of usages. So uh, you can actually, uh, we see uh, utility companies starting to uh, sort of collect payment. So you can pay your electricity or sort of even your uh, TV, for example, uh, in uh, Tanzania sort of through your mobile phone. You can pay your school fees, which will sort of be uh, very useful. And uh, we see even, we start seeing as well sort of companies starting to disburse uh, fund as well. And so early days of sort of salary payment. And the, uh, the, the other point which uh, I think we need to emphasize is that I don't know how many of you today can actually sort of make real-time payment. I think we had one example during lunchtime uh, of sort of a startup sort of trying sort of to do that. But when a user in, for example, uh, Tanzania in Dar es Salaam wants to send money to someone based in Arusha, he or she can do that in real time. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of a key difference. And Monkey, why is it that, it's, that it seems like something which is actually very simple and perhaps easier in some ways in countries that, are, that have the technology now that they're coming into the online community than it is here where we might have established interests or such a you know, differentiated landscape that we can't overcome some of these existing institutions? I mean, at MasterCard, if you guys were starting from scratch tomorrow, would it be very easy to facilitate person-to-person -person mobile payments or would it still be very difficult? Well, I think that um, you know we we should look at uh, the, it's a different context. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we we have a one, on one side uh, a world, uh, the developed economies, where we all have uh, we all enjoy a very widespread and very efficient uh, banking infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I don't think that uh, any of us here in the Western developed world uh, don't feel that uh, our needs are not catered for. You know, we all have bank accounts. We have several uh, payment cards. I don't, I, I don't really think that, uh, you know, from a f pure payment perspective, you know, any one of our needs is not met today. When you, mo when you move to the emerging economies, it's true that uh, uh, the penetration of, let's say, uh, Western-style, uh, you know, banking, retail banking, uh, faces a number of uh, structural obst obstacles. A and this is where the utilization of mobile phones and also a, a new way of approaching, you know, the delivery of financial services is so promising. 